Hey gents, today we're diving into Suit Supply dress shoes. I'm going to get these guys unboxed, talk about the shoes, and compare them to a few others in my collection. So make sure you subscribe to learn about the best menswear on the internet, get more videos like this, and without further ado, let's dive into the unboxing. Suit Supply is well known for their great suiting and shirting, but they also offer Italian-made, Italian calf leather Blake Stitch dress shoes in the $2.99 price point. So today, I picked up a pair of their Brode Oxfords and also a pair of their Tassel Loafers in order to check them out. I also picked up their leather sneakers, my popular request. So if you want a deep dive into these, the Peak Lapel did a write-up. I'll link to that below. Check that out. But for today, I'm sticking with the dress shoes. $2.99 is a really interesting price point for these shoes because a lot of the smaller brands that have popped up over the years in the footwear world have come in at the $1.99 price point with Blake Stitch construction and usually Italian calf leather. And so the suit supply ones are a little bit higher than that, but they're not quite as high as the Paul Evans or as the Allen Edmonds. So what I did is I brought all of those shoes together because I already have all of them. So let's talk about all of those for just a minute or two and then we'll come back to the beauty shots and the on foot shots. And I'll put a timestamp below if you just want to jump to that. Wow, the suit supply ones look so pristine amongst my road-worn collection here. So I wanted to get a representative sample from my collection of priced lowest to the highest. And uh, these are the Beck and Simonon Durant Brode Oxfords. I've had these for about two years. These are under, you can get them under $199. They're marked at $199, but depending on the sales that are going on and the discounts, uh, you can get them for lower. But you can see well-worn here. These are the new suit supply. These are my Paul Evans, and these are my Allen Edmonds. Now the Allen Edmonds, these are a pair of my factory seconds and actually right now they have a sale going on that they're like 249 or something but the, the full price is 425 and just to give you an idea of how they look amongst the group and then the Paul Evan ones 399 so outside of discounts you have 199 299 399 and 425 First, I wanted to get a weight difference with each of them. I don't think it's an indicator of the quality, but it does indicate what level of comfort you might have. The Paul Levens ones came in at the lightest at 1.14 pounds or 851 grams. The Beck and Simonon ones were 2.02 pounds or 969 grams. My Allen Edmonds Fifth Avenue came in at 2.12, very heavy. I've always thought that those were one of the heaviest shoes probably in my collection at 1,249 grams. The shoe supply ones came right in the middle. They're that baby bear, 2.0 pounds, 910 grams. What I've learned from buying stress shoes from like $80 up to the $400 price range is there's a huge difference in the quality of the leather based on each price point, and you basically get what you pay for in each of them. So you can see on the Beck and Simonon one, this is the a lower quality leather. It's still a nice quality leather, but you can see in the way that it's creased on the toe that it's just got more of a wrinkle to it than something like the Paul Evans. I've actually probably worn the Paul Evans now more than the Beck and Simonon ones, and you can see the way I've scuffed it up like driving and things but it has just a very much more supple way of creasing along the toe versus something that's going to show more cracking on the Beck and Simonon. That's not to say the Beck and Simonon aren't a great shoe, it's just the way that the crease happens looks much different on a leather of a $200 shoe versus a $400 shoe. And you can see that in the way that the leather creases on the Allen Edmonds, which is a similar quality leather to the Paul Evans. I would expect with a suit supply shoe, it's going to come right between those, but I also like the way that the toe cap is right in the middle of the two. So I mentioned in my Alan Emmons video that the toe cap is very short on this, which makes my feet look kind of stubby, especially because I wear such a large shoe. I really like the way that the Paul Evans make my feet look because of the much longer toe cap on here. And the suit supply one, you can see kind of fits right in between the two. So I think that's a really nice look for, especially for such a large shoe. 
I know that Suit Supply used to use cross grain leather, they now use full Italian calf uppers made in Italy, which is similar to the Paul Evans. And it's not a fair comparison because this is right out of the box. You can see it has a much higher shine than the Paul Evans. The Paul Evans ones out of the box looked incredible. I need to give these a nice polish, but uh, these have really become one of my go-tos. And the Paul Evans have a little bit more of an elegant look. You know, there's no stitching. You just see the seams on there. And even in the versions that Suit Supply makes, you still get a little bit of stitching. And then on the back, you've got a seam as well versus no seam on the Paul Evans. And I think I mentioned this in the Paul Evans review is the leather on the Paul Evans is so deep and rich and I think you get that because you are paying the extra $100 over the Suit Supply shoes. I like the high polish, high shine look on the Suit Supply shoes. I would just be really curious how they will look similar to another you know year of wear with the Paul Evans. But out of the box, gorgeous construction, gorgeous leather, and I love the color too. I went with a size 45 or US 12 on the Suit Supply shoes. They fit right in line with my other dress shoes like my Allen Edmonds, something like the Paul Evans. The Paul Evans actually run huge. I wear a 10 and a half or 11 in the Paul Evans, uh, but these fit right in line with other dress shoes. And I do think a nice feature of the shoe is it does have the rubberized sole on the bottom. So you get the leather work, of course, with the Blake stitch on here, and then you have the nailed heels, but then you also have the rubberized part, which helps with the wear and tear on the leather sole, especially for like rain and wet weather. You can get either of the shoes resold because they are Blake stitch, but having that rubberized insert is probably gonna help you last longer. It's not something full rubber like the day-night sole on my Allen Edmonds, but it's somewhere right in between. I'd be curious over time if you might see like peeling on this outer rubber based on the way that the sole wears, but that would remain to be seen. If you have an experience with that, of course, let me know down below because uh, these are all very new to me, but there are people who have been wearing suit supply shoes for years, I would assume. You have a similarly gorgeous execution of the Blake Stitch sole on the loafer. I do kind of wish that it had the same finish as the Oxford in the leather, but this leather to me on the loafer reminds me exactly of the 200-ish dollar leathers I've seen on the Beck and Simonon or on something like the Thomas Bird shoes that I just opened. So this does very much remind me of a $200 shoe, but it is priced at the $299 price point. So given that range, I do think Suit Supply offers a good value. It just depends on what you want out of a shoe. They have a really nice blend between like modern Italian looks and the very conservative looks of Allen Edmonds. The shoes are made in Italy, but I find it really curious that their site doesn't mention that. Because for me, if I don't see that it's made in Italy or Spain or Portugal, I just assume that it's made in China or somewhere in Asia. Because if the company wants the notoriety or the premium associated with constructing in Italy or Spain or Portugal instead of Asia, then they would put that front and center on their website. You can also see the heel is nailed right on the seam, which will help with wear and tear over time so that you don't break down the shoe as quickly. And then nice rubberized heel as well. They don't have a ton of options within their range, but they do have from tassel loafers to double monks and, and the oxfords in between. The shoes are very comfortable out of the box. There doesn't seem like there's going to be a big break-in period. The Meerman shoes that I got seemed like those are going to take forever to break in. And as with any other products, you are getting what you paid for because the creasing doesn't look like it's going to be nearly as bad as the Beck and Simonon, but it probably won't be as supple and nice as the Allen Edmonds or the Paul Evans. As for the loafers, I went with a 44 and a half because I was thinking size down. I want them to be a little bit more snug. You know, you don't wear socks and everything, but the, that extra half size is just way, much too small. So I'm gonna end up swapping those. But Suit Supply always gets bonus points from me because they do offer fast free shipping. You can order something on Monday and have it like Wednesday or Thursday, but then they also throw in the return label on the box, which is important to me because I took a chance ordering half size down on the loafers. It didn't work out, so now I can easily exchange those for a different size. So overall, I think these are a nice step up from the $200 price point. You do get that extra bit of quality in the leather and in the construction of the shoe. The stipulation there is if you are a standard width, if you are a non-standard width, you probably have to go with somebody like Allen Evans within that range, but you can only get standard sizes on the suit supply shoes but they do have up to size 15 shoes in the suit supply which is a nice option which you don't really get in traditional shoes so there you have it gents if you do have experience with the suit supply shoes for longer than just my unboxing here please sound off in the comments below so other guys can learn from you you can also reach out at the underscore cavalier on twitter and instagram i'll put links in my description to suit supply and all the other shoes that i mentioned in this video i'll put links to the podcast it is an interview with teddy baldassar where i talked about just everything and uh you can put all, check all those out below love to hear from you guys anytime until next time gents this is the cavalier Sunshine, feel it, blah, 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 sunshine. Finish all my videos before the sun comes up. How about that? Now I just gotta go put them together quickly 
in the editing room. This is my studio. This is my commute now. This is my house. All right, guys. See you uh, Monday.